So as we just talked about before, um, unlike yesterday, unlike last time, we're going to multiply not just monomial times polynomial, it's going to be polynomial times polynomial. So the first example I'm going to give you is something like this. x plus 4 times x minus 1. And first thing I should do is, because I don't want to make silly mistakes, I should use the definition of subtraction and rewrite this x minus 1 as, Chirac? Um, that's right, very good, x plus negative 1. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do first. Then, of course, how do we multiply binomial times binomial? Uh, it's very similar to what we did yesterday, uh, last time, yeah. That's right. I distribute the x just like yes, uh, last time, right? I distribute the x like last time, x times x plus negative one. Then, am I done with that? No. Yeah. You just I the, the positive yeah. Then I need to because there are two terms. You then do the same thing with positive four. Does that make sense? So it's the same idea as what we did last time, except now you have to distribute two terms instead of just one term, like monomial versus binomial. What if I had three terms here in the beginning? Then guess what? You have to multiply all those three. Okay, but here we just so I actually, actually uh, even like you know wrote, wrote down the numbers. This is what you're going to multiply first: x times x, and then x times negative one, and then am I done with that? No, well, four times x, and then four times negative one. Does that make sense? I'm sorry. How is it reverse distributive property? Oh yeah, and then you're gonna do four times x plus negative one. Is that what you mean? Let's let's write it. Okay, sure. What do I get when I do this? I get what? First, look at. I'm going to multiply the the first term with both of these terms, or the other polynomials. So x times x, which is x squared times plus x. Yeah. Actually, I wrote it out. I didn't multiply it. I didn't, remember I s wanted to show the work, and then four times x and four times x. negative one, and I just you know, wrote it out this way. Then you're right, I get x squared plus negative x plus 4x plus negative 4, right? Talene? Oh, Talene, am I done here? No. Why not, Talene? How come I'm not done? Because you have two of the same variables. Yes, I have, well, not same variable, I have like terms, right? So I have to then uh, combine those like terms. So uh, what do I get if I combine those together, Derek? What's negative x plus 4x? So. Yeah, plus 4 or minus 4, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So when you simplify, that's what we get. Pretty straightforward. By the way, should I do the arrows first, all four of them, then write out the product, or should I do one by one? Do one arrow, write the product. Yeah, do one by one, okay? Do one arrow, write the product. Why do you think I should do it that way? To the second row, write the product. Yeah. So you don't get all mixed up. Yeah, and not only that, so you know, you know, if you have more than two terms here, what if you have like three or four? Sometimes you forget to multiply one of the terms, then that's wrong, right? You see, so to make sure that you don't do that, you uh, do the arrow and write the product, and do the other one and write the product. So. Anyway, um, any question there so far? Yes, sir. Oh, that's, yeah, that's coming up later. Very good. So, yeah, so you're right. Uh, uh, Kobe said it correctly. Later, I'm going to give you a trinomial like this, and I'm going to ask you, what was it before we multiply them together? That's called factoring, and we're going to learn that later. I think some of you saw that in intro a little bit. Okay. But that, that's coming up way, I think it's coming up like at the end of first semester or second semester. But we'll get there. Don't worry. Anyway, okay, very good. Oh, is that what you meant by... Um, Chirac by distributive property backward. Okay, yeah, factoring. We're gonna get there later. I see what you mean. All right. So before I get to example two, uh, I need to explain to you something about the way we write uh, these polynomials. Okay. So write this down. Uh, let's see what goes into this blank space. Write this down. And this is going to be really, really helpful um, uh, when you do your homework and when you do your tests and so forth, you know, quiz. So write this down. It is often helpful 
to rearrange the terms of a polynomial so that the degrees of a particular va variable are in either something or something order. So what do you think goes into some either something or something order? Oh, you have an idea already? Oh, oh okay. Good. Uh, actually, increasing or decreasing order. And yeah, later we're going to talk about alphabetical in a minute. That you're right. But first of all, but the major thing is they're in increasing or decreasing order of their degrees. Okay? So write that out. And I, I like decreasing better. So that's why I did this in red. But write it out first of all. Go ahead. Give it time. So for example, what do you what do I mean by this, you think? Okay, so look at this example. Look at this polynomial. Is this polynomial written in? Yeah, this says degrees. Let me. Oops. Okay, so <laughs> let me do that later. Uh, so look at the polynomial. Yeah, how do I rearrange this polynomial so that it is going to be helpful for us? And it's going to be really helpful for us. So anybody know? First, first of all, why is this polynomial not really not a good way of writing? Yeah, why, why isn't this written in a nice way? Yeah. It's in random order of the, the degrees. degrees, the exponents, right? Yeah. So can somebody rearrange this? Oh. Which order do I like better, increasing or decreasing? Increasing. I like, no, I like decreasing, that's why. That's oh, you did? Okay, good. So then, yeah, what can, yeah, Christine? Um, um, X to the fourth. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. That's right. So notice Christine wrote them this way. By the way, it's called the decreasing order. When you write the uh, exponents in decreasing order this way, it's called standard form. Uh, I need to talk about a little more about standard form, especially about their coefficients. But we'll talk about that a little later. But right now, I, w I just want you to be aware that you know I like them in decreasing order. Isn't this how we? Isn't this how we've been doing these anyway? Okay. So remember, I told you I want you to write them in certain order. The decreasing order of the exponents. Look, I have x to the fourth, then I have x to the third, then I have x to the fourth, uh, x to the, it doesn't say anything, but what is this really? Four x to the, what's this one? X to the what power is this? We're first. What about this two? Do I have any x to the what? This is kind of tricky. This is x to the, anybody know? For two? Zero. Zero power is correct. Why? Raise your hand, why? X to the zero power is really what? One, two people think, Owen? No, x to the zero power is oh, zero because oh, it was zero. It won't oh. you won't get two. Be, it's what, Sarah? Is there no x to the zero to the zero? Oh. No. Oh. This is since you're missing x, the reason why you don't have this is really you could think of this as two uh, times x to the zero power. Emily? Well, x to the zero, anything to the zero power is just one. Anything to the zero power is one. Well except zero to the zero. Yeah. But yeah. Anything to the zero except zero is one. So it's really one times two, that's why. You know, you could think of it as two times x to the zero power. Because x to the zero power is one. That's why the number by itself goes at the very end. Does that make sense? Now, what if you did it in increasing order? Is that wrong to write this as, in, as an increasing order? No, it's not wrong. Uh, who could tell me how to rewrite this in increasing order? Yeah, Judy. Two plus negative four x plus two x to the third plus x to the fourth. That's right. So you could just write it this way: two plus negative four minus four x uh, plus two x cubed plus x to the fourth. It's exactly the what? Opposite order as what we had before. Which one do I like better? Decreasing, Decreasing order. Because again, you gotta get used to that because we're gonna have to write them in standard forms anyway. So why not practice now? But is it wrong to write in the other order? No, it's not wrong. It's just this is the one that we're used to. Yes? Yeah, if you want, but but do decreasing order. <laughs> okay. Alright, uh, what if I have this one? This one's a little bit different. Why is this different than the first example? John, how is this different? Oh, I have like terms on this? I don't think so. No, that's not why it's different. Harrison, do you see any difference between the first example and the second one? Not really? Judy? Oh, oh there are two variables. Okay, Harrison, is that what you mean? So Harrison, what do you think I should do if there are two variables? Which then, which so then I don't know which one to follow because there are two variables. Each of these variables have exponents. 
Which one should I use? No, you don't use the coefficient. This is what oh, one of you said. Uh, I think this is what uh, Caroline said. What do you think, Caroline? I have x and y. Which exponent should I follow? X. X, y. Yeah, that's when alphabetical order comes, okay? You don't have to follow, but normally we choose x because x comes before y, right? So what you do is whenever you have more than one variable, you choose one variable, okay? You could do either x or y. It's not wrong to do y, but then let's just do x because x comes before y in alphabetical order. Who could then tell me how to rearrange this using the uh, degrees of the x or the, pot, the exponents of the x term? Anybody? Carolina, go ahead. Um, x cubed. Cube. Uh-huh. Um, yep. Yeah, that's what I get. Uh -huh. So if you were to choose x, right, as your variable for the exponent, so you, you so if there are more than one variable, you just choose one. And which one do you choose? Normally, you choose one in alphabetical order, whichever comes first. Could I have chosen y to rearrange them? Yeah. Who could help me how to do that using y? How would I rewrite this? One person? Two? Three? Four? Anyone else? Five? Lindsay, can you tell me how to write? Yeah, if I were to, if I, so since we have two variables, what if I chose y to rearrange them in decreasing order? What would you do? Uh huh. Yep. Uh huh. Yeah, exactly. It's the same, exactly, but opposite order. You see how it's exactly opposite order as what I had before? Does that make sense? So exactly right. And I like how you guys kept the negative three x square y, right? It's really plus negative three x squared y. That's like you know that term is negative, right? The coefficient. Very good. Any question? So we're ready for example two. Remember, I told you it is going to be helpful for us. Let me show you why it's so helpful. Okay. Look at example two. Um, this is kind of written in. Look at the two polynomials that we have. We got two minus x times three plus five x minus four x squared and so forth. Is this written in the form that I like? Uh, yeah, it's not in standard form. I, I want it in decreasing order. But this one is in increasing order. I mean, it's not wrong, but let's just then just change it to a standard form and see how it's helpful for us. Does that make sense? Who could help me re to rearrange these so that they become uh, standard form? How about uh, Audrey? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Good. That's what I, I'm going to rewrite them in standard form, and I'm going to show you why this is helpful. Okay, so just kind of follow along. So of course I'm going to multiply x negative x times. So notice how many times when I when I multiply uh, negative x with the polynomial three times because why we have how many terms do I have? Three terms. What about two? How many times am I going to multiply two? How many times am I going to distribute two? Three times again because you have three terms. So negative x times negative four x squared. I'm just going to write it out times here, the second one, negative x times 5x. Again, don't draw the arrow first, okay? Do the one arrow and then write it out, write the product, do the one arrow. Negative x times 3 is just negative x plus 3. Are you okay so far? So I, I distributed the first term with the rest of the uh, trinomial. Is that okay? And then, of course, I'm not done. I need to then multiply the second term with the rest of the polynomial, right? So 2 times that trinomial. And notice I didn't write it next to. I didn't just kind of continue on horizontally like last time. Uh, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to rewrite. When I write 2 times negative 4x squared, I'm going to write it right underneath this term. Like kind of. And then 2 times 5x, I wrote it underneath this. Plus 2 times 3, I wrote by itself at the end. Uh, why do you think? Anybody see why I did this? Actually, when I simplify this, it'll be more clear in a minute. But... Anybody see why I didn't kind of write them all horizontally? Oh, you see it? I see. Why? That's because like when you simplify it, yeah. you on like already. Uh-huh. So like all of the like terms will be like next to it. Yeah, they will line up, the like terms. Isn't that right? <coughs> Do you see what I'm Okay, so you may not see this right now, but watch. Who, who could tell me, look at, what does the first x, negative x times 4x squared become? Uh, how about Emily? 